There YouTube, Mount Boy here. I'm up at the off-grid place and I thought I would talk to you about my electrical system. So I'll start at the top here. I have two 100 watt solar panels up here. And the way I've attached them to the container is with the brackets that came. I think this is a Renewology package. And I just bolted some uh, niobium magnets to it. This area here gets a tremendous amount of wind, as you can kind of see. And uh, and so far, so good. They haven't blown off. So, And then I have it kind of going down through the already existing opening in the container. And then I just put in some, uh, some film. It's okay, Ollie. It's okay. I'll be down in a minute. So from, from there... This is simply the wiring uh, runs down into this container and then underneath the deck and some conduit and then up. And then you can kind of see down there is the gold zero and that's where I'll pick up. Okay, well, I shouldn't be on the roof. I'm too old for that. I'm gonna get myself hurt, but let me show you where we come in. So we come from our, the way I have it set up, you can see this plug back here. So the line from the solar panels comes through the conduit under the deck up into the container. And then I have it kind of a dedicated plug, which plugs into the solar controller. You, know, you can see with the blue that it's actively receiving on the here. We're getting 18 Watts in we're charging. I've been up here all weekend. So I'm down at 9% and I'll kind of talk about some of the other options. One thing that's cool. This is a, a, a goal zero Yeti 1400 lithium it's a great unit it's got uh, an inverter built in goes up to 1500 watts for kind of a constant pull 3000 watt surge and it works fairly well i use that for things like charging tool batteries and then also running an induction cooktop which we'll look at here in a minute uh, you've got usb-c usb-a you can kind of run other inputs in here like if you have a different solar controller or an external one you want to use, uh, you can kind of plug it in at home. So that's what that is nice about this. You can take it in the car and I can just go plug it in at home. So if you don't have solar panels, you can still just bring it up for the weekend and run your off-grid place. In this case, I like it because I'll leave it just like this and it'll be at 100% when I come home. So that's everything in. This is literally everything out. So this line, 12 volt, comes out. There's another plug down there that it plugs into that then literally powers the whole container. The way it does it, there's a product called Isofast, which you can kind of get a glimpse of here. It's this styrofoam insulation product. And I'll put a picture of it in. And you can see it's like an inch and a half thick. And what's cool about it, it, it has like built-in conduits inside of it. And so, running all throughout this are essentially pre-done conduits that then you can kind of hook up all your outlets to uh, and it's just very logical very well thought out and a really nice product it even works in the ceiling so you can see kind of my lighting up there so the 12 volt comes from the goal zero it basically just comes up to this this is something you could get at any rv shop or boat shop i think this came from west marine and basically it's a real simple panel there's a series of fuses kind of back behind here so everything is protected and then that distributes out uh again through all the conduits to all the hard mounts but then it also comes over here and i have all the lighting set up to this switch panel so it's kind of neat this is you know just stuff for auto marine application and what's nice about it is they offer kind of a variety of button types they kind of light up so you know what's on or off you can label it i also put in this led floor stripping which is really nice especially in the evening if you're hanging out and you don't want a lot of direct light i also added two strips there in the uh, supportless shelves and you can see it basically it's just like a a really thin aluminum conduit with a with a kind of a clear plastic lens and then i just put in white cool white you can get colors you get all sorts of things 
and then the wiring just kind of goes in and it's covered by that little piece of trim uh, behind the mescal there and then into this box this box also gives me uh, tells me how many volts this is it running in the system right now because uh, I've got all the lighting going there's more of a draw but that's what's available here at yet another uh, um, USB charging location so we'll, t we'll turn those off and then I also have here another auxiliary circuit uh, basically I put in just one little spotlight so I've got something to work with here by the wood stove and this other one is a future I, I I'm going to do decking lighting outside, probably something underneath to illuminate the ground rather than illuminate the area. Um, I was going to try to run actual lighting, but, you know, then I kind of got turned on to these Obel products and they're really slick and they're continuing to evolve. This is like the first generation. It's just basically a little rechargeable light that you can dim. It has different output levels. It has, uh, if I can get it, different colors. So it's really nice for at night to like have disco mode. Then they came up with a bigger one. And with this bigger one, they actually made it connectable to your phone. So I can actually turn these on, adjust the dim, the, the brightness, and turn them off all from my phone. And I can network them together, which is really nice. They have a magnetic backing. So I just plug them right onto the shipping container and they work really well and they're not too expensive I think it's like 30 bucks a piece for the big ones I also kind of added this this is another Olight product and you can kind of see here it's got like a like a little area light it just kind of gives me light just here in my kitchen workspace so if I'm if it's at night and I don't want to you know have the other thing that's really cool it kind of has this mood lighting that you can kind of lock in. It goes through kind of the color range. And it's again, it's just nice mood lighting. It's something soft for at night. Or if you want a night light uh, on that's not gonna disrupt your sleep, it works really well. The last thing on the uh, lighting side I'll talk about are these little Olight lanterns. And this is really beautiful, high quality. Like you can see here, that's a very kind of nice warm light you can see the led filaments there this is all rechargeable it can even act as a auxiliary power source to charge your phone then it has like a white light mode that points down it is much lighter i really like this because again just like i've kind of put this here on an ikea hook you can kind of put this anywhere you can adjust the lighting accordingly and rather than trying to work out dimmers for a 12 volt system that's just far simpler so the last two things I'll talk about, or actually three things I'll talk about is really all on this cabinet here. Uh, so there's a circuit in the back that runs here. These two switches, one runs an auxiliary set of lights underneath the cabinet, which is really nice if I'm having to get under there and change out a water tank or something like that. The other one actually runs the pump. So I don't have it hooked up right now, but the way it works is I turn that on, it turns the pump on, and then when you use the faucet, it's on demand. And uh, the other part of this circuit runs the trucker fridge. So it's a 12 volt fridge. I'd say if I had this thing set to full, it'll draw down. I'd say the battery without any solar input would probably last four to five days. With solar input on a cloudy day, it'll just keep up with keeping this fridge going. Uh, usually what I need to do is get here. The first thing I do is turn this on get it cold and it takes a few hours to really get cold. So the last electrical thing I'll talk about is cooking. So built into the Goal Zero is a 1500 watt inverter. I mentioned that before. And I use it to not only recharge tool batteries, but I also have this induction cooktop. I can't run it at 100% power, but I can run it at 85% power. It will, like if that tea kettle is full of water, it will boil it in probably about seven minutes and then it's done. And then there's like no residual heat. It uses kind of the magnetism in the, uh, the resistance and the magnetism in the steel pot to create the heat. There's no extra heat. They're very efficient. Uh, if I run it 100%, it'll just trip the breaker 
on the inverter on the goal zero. So I mostly cook meals on the wood stove, but for just kind of heating up morning coffee or uh, some extra wash water, you don't want to have a fire, that's a great alternative. I also keep a kind of a propane little stove just under there in the camp box. So anyway, that's my electrical system as it stands today. I don't know, we'll see. I mean, I have the two panels up there. The way I set it up is I can easily add two more panels and just run them in series, which I'm considering doing if I'm up here more often, it'd be nice just to have a little bit more oomph on these cloudy days. So, and then also I would probably put in a recharging station in that container where I kind of plan a future workshop. I hope you uh, enjoyed this. If you got any questions about it, just let me know and uh, Mountain Boy out. Take care. Bye-bye.